Hello there everyone. My name is Reflection. A lot of you may know me as the labbing guru for ice climbers that made the bungus boost combo. Today, I'll be teaching you all I know about ice climbers. But before we get into this video... This is part one of a three-part tutorial series that will cover everything relevant and practical to ice climbers nowadays. So, let's get right into the ice climbers fundamentals tutorial. Before we start, there are a few bad points about Ice Climbers that I'm going to immediately tell you all about. Number one, janky recovery. Ice Climbers have a recovery that isn't exactly perfect. Our squall can suddenly start falling when we hit opponents midair, and... Well... Yeah. That happens. Number two, Nana's AI and programming. Nana is notorious for being completely stupid AI-wise, or the programming of her just kills her. Here are the two worst examples of this. Why, Nana? Number three, Nana dependency. Ice climbers are forced to rely on Nana for maximum potential, leading to have to multitask both climbers. Without Nana, you become the worst character in the game with a terrible recovery. Belay and Squall both lose a lot of their recovery aspect, and you have like no combos. Lastly, number four, bad matchups. It is no surprise that Ice Climbers struggle a lot with zoners, especially the Belmonts, and with rushdown characters to some degree. Next, let's address something to avoid confusion. The main climber you always control will always be referred to as Popo, and the second Ice Climber's name will always be Nana. With that out of the way, let's get into the moveset of the Ice Climbers. Let's start with our grounded attack moves. Our jab is a two-hit jab with little damage and knockback. Forward tilt is a small disjoint with medium damage and knockback. Up tilt is a multi-hit anti-air dealing medium damage with low knockback. Perfect for comboing. Down tilt is a low sweep with a low angle dealing low damage with medium knockback. Dash attack is a fast and small disjointed burst option with moderate damage and medium knockback. Forward smash is our strongest kill option with high damage and knockback. Down smash is our fastest smash attack with low damage and medium high knockback. Up smash is a great outer shield option with medium damage and knockback. Now for our aerials. Neutral air covers both sides of the climbers and is a move that lingers for quite a while, dealing little damage with very low knockback. Forward air is a strong disjointed move dealing medium high damage with strong knockback. Additionally, only Nana has the spike hitbox. Down air is a long-lasting aerial, dealing medium damage and knockback. It is one of the few down airs to also lack a landing hitbox. Up air is a disjoint with medium damage and knockback. It is an amazing juggling tool, being able to hit the opponent so much with just one move. Finally, back air is an easily spammable move with little landing lag, dealing a moderate amount of damage with high knockback. Lastly, our special moves. Our neutral B, Ice Block, shoots a small block of ice dealing very little damage. It can be hit back and possibly freeze at high percents. Our side B is Squall Hammer, arguably one of our best moves. It deals high damage, it combos into other moves like up till and up air, and has great horizontal coverage both in the air and on stage. Blizzard is our down special. It deals a lot of damage and freezes opponents, leading to more follow-ups and possibly even kills. Lastly, our up special is Belay. It covers an impressive amount of area for recovery, and Nana also has a very strong hitbox after being initially thrown. There are a few more things to point out about Ice Climbers. AI's ledge options. Any option Nana does is completely random. Do not expect her to do the same thing over and over again. Popo Force. Popo always has an invisible bubble around him that naturally pulls a Nana into place right behind Popo. Additionally, this force makes Nana face the same way Popo faces as shown in this example. The 6 frame difference. It is easily noticeable that Nana's moves will almost always hit later than Popo's. This is because Nana will always receive the input at the same time as Popo, but performs them 6 frames later. 
this is something new players will need to get accustomed to for later combos and understanding for later desyncs and combos. Here is a frame by frame example of the 6 frame difference. A little note before the next section. It is advised by most people to practice with Ice Climbers for a little while to get a feel for the character as a whole before studying these things. And if I didn't say this, I would get some heat from people. With all of the basic info out of the way, let's get into the easiest desyncs of them all. Let's start with the landing light desync. This is our most basic and simplest way to desync as Ice Climbers. It works with either short hop up air into landing up air, or with short hop back air into landing up air. Now for the explanation. Since Popo Force pulls Nana to Popo, she actually lands before her own up air starts, allowing her to avoid going through up air's landing lag. The Squall desync is a commonly used desync by all professional ice climbers for combos or even for retreats. The timing for this desync is very easy, as the final swing around here is the time you would input Nana's option and then Popo's option. The reason this works is, after Squall, both Popo and Nana go through Squall's end lag. However, since Nana has the 6 frame difference mechanic, we are actually able to buffer something for only Nana 6 frames earlier than Popo's input. Popo MUST perform any action for this desync to work. The Throw Desync After any throw, you can buffer any action for Nana and have Popo do a separate action. Simple as that. Much like Squall Desync, both Popo and Nana go through any throws ending lag. However, since Nana has a 6 frame difference mechanic, we are actually able to buffer something for only Nana 6 frames earlier than Popo's input. Popo also must perform any action for this desync to work. Cheerless throw is a state of keeping the Ice Climbers desync, performing a throw that ensures Nana does not cheat. This is a very commonly used desync for combos. Notice how Nana did a forward tilt instead of cheering in this example. How this desync works. We cancel Nana's cheer animation by inputting a throw before Nana's window to enter the cheer animation opens, allowing Nana to do anything during the throw. The final desync I will cover in this episode is Soymilk. Yes, it is a very strange name for a desync, but it is what it is. Soymilk is one of the best neutral tools in our arsenal, being able to desync the climbers at any point while running, being used as an approach option or a zoning option. This explanation is a bit longer. Due to the unique mechanic of Popo Force, we are able to have Nana completely ignore a set list of inputs while having Popo perform set inputs. After Popo enters the turnaround skid animation, Nana will dash instead of entering the same animation since Popo Force forces her to face the direction Popo faced 6 frames ago. Since characters cannot perform specific moves immediately out of a dash, only Popo performs these as he was in the turnaround skid animation. Here is a set of basic instructions of how to perform the soy milk desync in the bottom right. You can also look at my input viewer. For this section, I will show you the most basic combos for Ice Climbers. In this combo, I used a throw desync to make Nana roll and Popo forward tilt into Nana's squall, re-grab, 
Cheerless Down Throw, Nana Roll, and Popo Nair into Nana Squall, into a re-grab Cheerless Down Throw, into a Nana Forward Air Spike. Thank you all for watching part 1 of the tutorial series. Hope to see you all in the next part, Ice Climbers Level Up tutorial.